I want to get your attention for a moment, my brothers and sisters, as we off top give the Holy Spirit all the honor and the glory and all praise and worship. My title says, Hot Message for Family versus Family. I want you to think hard about what I'm about to say. And whether you celebrate holidays or not, catch this. Next month and this month, there are going to be a whole lot of people sitting around a table. And some of them know they can't stand each other. And then there are going to be a lot of people sitting around a table and realize certain ones have died and they are no longer with you. Family. Family versus family. There are people in families that haven't spoke to each other in years. Nor forgave each other in years. Now I want to come from a biblical standpoint on how important family is according to the Bible. So many scriptures to back it up. How when a man leaves his, his father and mother to cleave to his wife and when he starts up his own family how precious is that to the Holy Spirit? And we go against each other, disrespect each other. How that grieves the Holy Spirit. So many have died and went to the grave without repenting. And so many done, 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 done died and didn't get a chance to get it right with other family members. And here goes something else I'm going to let you know. Somebody else going to die before you have your next Christmas gathering. See, family, we wait too long to get together. I'm not talking about everybody, because there are some families that get together. We've been so distant, so angry, so full of hatred. Not knowing that we need each other more than we think. You can look at the families in the Bible to see the, the hard times and some of the good times. But when you look at somebody like David who had a dysfunctional family, a lot of us know we got dysfunctional families, but I'm here to tell you right now, you might want to start forgiving. Because as we are left around her, the longer we're left around her, the more and more hard it's going to be. And that you need each other more than you think. Old saying was, don't you burn that bridge. You might have to cross over again. So many of them burned the bridges. So many look in the mirror and they hate what they see. There are some people in the families that just keeping up drama. Malice in their heart. And most of them got the nerve to be up in the church talking about they're Christian and shouting hallelujah and behind the pulpit or on the deacon board, but you won't even speak to your own brother or sister. How can you say you love the Holy Spirit whom face you ain't never seen, but you got a problem with your brother or your sister? Holy Spirit don't like that. It grieves the Holy Spirit once again. I see so many family members at each other's throat. The Bible shows you how important family is, but then it also shows you a spiritual family. That's why every now and again the Holy Spirit will send somebody your way or somebody's your way. They ain't blood related, but you more closer with them than you are with your blood related family because it's a spiritual connection. Huh? Spiritual connection. And that's what he said about his disciples. He said, these are my brothers. Not that he was 
disrespecting his half brothers like James and everybody. But he, he Yahshua was trying to show us this is family. And that's what I see when I come on here. Even though we have disagreements, this is a spiritual family, a spiritual connection, a relationship that only the Holy Spirit can bring together. I never thought in my life growing up I would see so many of family members disrespecting each other, mad at each other, and go to the grave like that. Never said I'm sorry. Never repented. Never had that 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 change of heart. But here come a spiritual family. Yahshua said, "Those who do the will of my Father." It tears up the family. It tears up the children. Why we can't go see such and such? Mom, I want to go. I ain't talking to him. I don't speak to him. I don't speak to her. We don't want nothing to do with them. And I understand that certain people, yeah, you got to get away from them because they evil. But hopefully somebody will repent. You don't want them evil spirit around you, and you sure don't want them evil spirits to jump off of your children. But this is the time of year. Oh, it's let's get into the holiday season. What is that? So it's only for a season. So we want to get together and act like family because it's December, it's Thanksgiving, November. Nah. You can miss me with that. Now some people from the family start doing something for somebody they could have did something for all year long. Let's pass out some turkeys. They've been starving all year long. Boy, you better you better come to this gathering so you can see your great uncles and your and your papas and your and your family and your some of them ain't here no more. Let me say this as I close. When you got a chance to make it right, whether that other person accept it or not, somebody got to be the bigger person. Get that hatred, get that unforgiveness out of your heart so you can be freed up and you can move on. Now, whatever they do with it, they don't accept it or whatever, don't you worry about that. I was listening at this woman's cry out in the women's shelter Monday Monday night. My sister was saying how I think she's the fifth child and how she was there for everybody. She let everybody stay with her. But when she fell on hard times and having to wind up in the women's shelter, where's her help? She said the family plots against her. What am I trying to say? Family versus family. And I said, young sister, you know what? The ones that very well do you wrong and do you that bad, don't you know in the long run they're going to need you? Mm. And it's going to be up to you to want to help them or not or forgive them or not. I, I see that all the time. People that do you the worst, they, 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 and, and later on they get miserable in life. Now they want your help. They want to cry out. They want oh, family, kinfolk, cuz, sister, brother. Oh, now we family because now you down and now now your health done got bad. But when your health was good, you was dogging everybody out. Who teach Holy Spirit? I see people and, and, and that's older and in nursing homes and some of them in the mental houses. They don't disown, they don't mess up, and, and, and they don't have nobody to come visit them. They made their life rough because of what they did to people. How do you tell your child you should have never been here? Y'all got to hear some of these stories in the women's shelter on Monday night. And I'm glad that they have that shelter to go to because how some of them be out there still on the street, they probably be dead. It get real when we go up in there, don't it, D.D.? It's very uplifting. And I always tell them, ladies, 
it's just temporary. Don't let me see you here again. Because they done fell on hard times. They need a job. They need somewhere to stay. And the thing that tires my heart up the most is when I have to look in the eyes of them little children in that shelter with their mom, confused, don't know what's going on, scared at the same time, wanting to know when they're going to get out of there, and wondering why they couldn't go to certain family members' houses. But I thank y'all for this shelter. How they take them women in. They feed them. Some of them women have been beat down emotionally, physically, mentally. I mean, beat down in every way you can think of. Where is family? But I know it's two sides to the story. And the truth lies somewhere in the middle. People are dying left and right. But if you got that chance, to make it right, do it. Because people are leaving here every single day. Families versus family. You didn't think you was going to see you in tour with your oldest sister, your oldest brother. Your baby brother, your uncle, your auntie, your own mama, your own daddy. Sons that ain't spoke to their dads in years. Mamas who done disowned their own daughters. Men who have walked out on their family. That's The Bible say fathers don't provoke your child to anger. You think what you're doing only affects you? No. It affects the ones around you, and it's shown up. It, it, it affects them children who are full of anger. Families versus family. Will you forgive, or will you continue to wait until the next loved one dies? trip me out at these funerals. And the very ones that's always up there trying to talk and, and, and get everything out of family, they wasn't even there to help at all. Nine times out of ten. Those are the ones that keep up all the hell and they wasn't there at all when that loved one was going through what they was going through. And then there's some family members sitting up waiting on some family members to die so they can see what they can get. The ones you love the hardest disrespect you the hardest. The ones you do the most for will tell you to kiss their rear end. And I leave you on that note. Families versus family. But when you get around that spiritual family, that's exactly what you need. Getting on one accord, being around like-minded people who understand you. Even if you don't agree you, on everything, you still understand each other. You love each other. You encourage each other. And you won't try to harm each other. And on that note, Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. Shalom.